Hi, and welcome to this online meeting of our course, Race, Ethnicity, and Linguistic Diversity in Classrooms and Communities, Sociocultural Theory and Practices. In preparation for this week's class, you've read two readings written by either Lisa Delpit, Michelle Grijalva, Jabari Mahiri, or Molly Blackburn. In addition, you've thought about how these readings relate to the Bakhtinian concept, heteroglossia, and how they relate to the inclusion of diverse voices in culturally and linguistically complex classrooms. In today's lesson, we will look at the following topics. One, what is heteroglossia? Two, what do sociocultural theorists tell us about heteroglossia and what do their comments imply about heteroglossia in the classroom? Three, what forms of teaching can help to advance this kind of knowledge in diverse classrooms? You will complete an individual field assignment that will give you an opportunity to look for evidences of heteroglossia in the classroom. Next, you will think beyond what you see and consider the possible role that heteroglossia might play in a successful classroom serving diverse students. And finally, you will work toward building your own definition of the term heteroglossia to share with the class during our next meeting. For Bakhtin, the term heteroglossia describes the coexistence of distinct varieties within a single linguistic code. In Greek, hetero means different. Glossa means tongue or language, as in voices or points of view. Heteroglossia, however, also implies the juxtapositioning of different voices or points of view, and often these different voices bring with them a contradiction and conflict in belief systems. Bakhtin speaks of centripetal and centrifugal forces in his work. That is, forces pulling in different directions, one towards centralization, while the other force pulls in the direction of dispersed or decentralized perspectives. Put another way, opposing forces are working all the time. Centripetal forces are pushing in the direction of a unitary authoritarian voice, while centrifugal forces are pushing in the direction of multiple voices, languages, or perspectives. Heteroglossia is a term that emerges from the work of Russian philosopher Mikhail Bakhtin. Among other things, he was a literary theorist. In one of his best known books, The Dialogic Imagination, he uses the novel as a metaphor in his discussions, not just about language itself, but about thought. He was interested in contributing to the discussion on how people think and how that relates to how people learn. Here are a few definitions of heteroglossia that may help to clarify the notion as Bakhtin intended it. Literally, the term heteroglossia means different tongues. According to Bakhtin, heteroglossia, once incorporated into the novel, is another's speech in another's language and is contrasted with poetics or authoritative voices. According to Webster's New Millennium Dictionary of English, heteroglossia refers to the existence of two or more voices within a text, especially conflicting discourses within a linguistic activity, as between the narrative voice and the characters in a novel. And according to the literary encyclopedia, Heteroglossia should not be confused with a simple celebration of linguistic diversity, for the term not only alludes to the coexistence of languages within a language, but their coexistence in a state of tension and competition. Imagine, if you will, that in Bakhtin's mind, at one extreme 
is novelistic discourse, in particular like that of Doskotovsky or Mark Twain's novel, in which registers, languages, voices, and perspectives are allowed to interact and respond to each other. At the other extreme would be the military authoritative order, which he refers to as poetics, which attempts to minimize all orientations of the work toward a dialogue between the past and future, and which prompts no response, but instead simple obedience. Imagine a classroom, if you will, with novelistic interactive discourse that honors various registers, languages, voices, and perspectives, versus one that has authoritative discourse that minimizes discourse and dialogue and honors obedience rather than interactive response.